Oh, sacrificing time. Yeah, because you get the guy who's got the broken finger, Gendo, who's already given it up. Got to get it down. He bunts, and he does get it down. Manessis will look. Down two runs with a 2 2 count and runners on first and second base and no outs, Gin the Solskjaer, instead of lining up to try to hit a home run, lined up to lay down a sacrifice bunt. And after that, this happened. The out. That one is driven to left field. A Rosarena will make the catch. Nakano tags. He'll come in to score. Then, in the next inning, to win the game, this happened. Looks back at Otani. The pitch is hit to left center field. Looking at the hit that ended the game from Mune Takamunakami, in this situation, they were down one run. So all he had to do is basically put the ball in play. However, if it were not for Gendas bunt, he would have had to hit a three run homer to win the game. Instead, only needing a base hit, the rest is history. Noticing the cast on Genda's right pinky finger, his sacrifice bunt was representative of the idea in Japanese baseball called tsunagu, which means to connect, or to string together, piece together, tie together. And instead of the American way of playing baseball where you load the bases and aim for home runs, instead Japanese baseball aims to manufacture small successes and tie them together to have a larger success. This is Koshien, a high school baseball tournament that rivets the nation every single summer. High school teams from all across the nation win their regional tournaments and convene in Osaka for a chance to be crowned the best high school baseball team in the country. A riveting one and done baseball tournament where every team gets to play on national TV. One fundamental that remains live and well in this tournament, the bunt. A skill that is quickly dying, if not dead, in Major League and American Baseball. Here you can see a graph of sacrifice bunts declining decade after decade, from a high in the 1945 era of 0.58-ish per game, to a low, historically, in 2020, of around 0.15. This is a list of players from 1978 to 1992, mostly position players, and the record for a sacrifice bunch, Craig Reynolds at 34, Ozzie Smith, 23. Even in the 90s, you see Brett Butler with 24, and you see Jay Bell with 39 and 30. Players routinely giving themselves up for the betterment of the team to advance runners. What has happened in the last 2022 era, all pitchers and all under 20. Beautiful sacrifice bunt, squeeze play to win the score the game and win the game with a squeeze bunt. That is Japanese baseball. And that is why Japanese baseball is the strongest baseball in the world. I thought it would be so interesting to bring in all these people that we have nothing in common except relationships. That's the one thing everyone has in common. Just like many people can remember the story with Oprah and Aramis, after that big blow up, a lot of people didn't stop supporting Aramis, even though that shot may have had certain views, the person in that shot may have had certain views. And I feel the same way about just pearly things in terms of her personal opinions. Whatever they might be, I'm not really in interested in them because what I'm more interested in is the success that she's had with her podcast and the fact that she's done it very systematically. Whatever her views may be, I don't know the views of the person who drives the bus. I don't know the views of the person who picks the produce that I eat. I don't know the views of the person who makes sure that my internet works. Their job is not to do that in terms of telling me what their their opinions are. Their job is to do their job and her job is to have a successful podcast and she's doing a very good job of that. And one thing that she realized early on is if you're going to have conversation, you have to have it in person. And in-person conversation gives a different feel to the conversation that 
is more natural and Fresh and Fit have understood this as well as Adler and Preach. Once she figured this out, as you can see in this picture with Jess, she understood that she could grow her podcast with natural flowing conversation. Oh, I forgot to put in the part. My manager um, now did respond to me eventually after a year. So he's, when did you start managing me? This is Social Blade showing her steady increase in subscribers. Roughly a year ago, she was at 23,000 subscribers. But once she won, figured out her format and two, delegated some of her responsibilities to different people through hiring, you see that by the summer, she was over 100,000 subscribers in a four month period. And you see the steady increase and it went basically on a steady upward trajectory after she had put herself into a position where she wasn't doing all of the work herself, instead creating a machine that got the job done. I did meet with Kevin Samuels twice before he passed away, and he also gave me some advice for my channel. Donovan Sharp also helped me with my channel early on. Pearl admitted in a conversation with Obsidian that she sought Kevin Samuels, Donovan Sharp, and the lead attorney for paid advice in order to implement it into her channel. So instead of learning the hard knocks herself, she went and sought expert information and advice from people who had already achieved success on YouTube and she got this kind of success when it was implemented. I even reacted to a couple pickup artists like um, John Anthony Lifestyle. I ended up going to his boot camp and doing a whole vlog of like seeing what it's like for a guy going to like a boot camp to try to learn how to get laid. I was like, oh, this is so interesting. This is not a video to celebrate Jess Pearly Thing's personal views or her political views, because I don't care about that. What it is a video about is celebrating what she's done with her channel. And she's done that by covering all the bases, the fundamentals. She got expert advice from people that are successful. She focused on live conversation over panels where you could have clear, flea throwing conversation. She delegated responsibility, doing all the small things just like you see in Japanese baseball. When you walk by a public park and you see elementary school kids here, they're practicing bunting. And when you walk by a junior high school, they're practicing bunting. And if you go to a pro baseball game, they're practicing bunting. And then you have heroes like Gendel, who bunt in the run that made it possible to put their team in a situation where they could be the best team in the world by doing the small, successful things that would allow them to string together successes, Sunagu, to have big success. In life, it is not about the home runs. It's about the small daily successes put together that gives you great success as shown by Jess Pearly Things and her channel and by the Japanese baseball team winning the World Baseball Classic. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.